Last time, we saw the conclusion to the Cell Saga, as well as the evolutions that everybody got. But this is only the beginning for them. It seems like everyone still has a long way to go before they reach their true potential. So, where do we go from here? We'll be seeing all that and more in this part 5 of What If Turles Survived. We enter the 7 year time skip. Of course, over this time period, Turles will continue training so he can get a control over the form that he just got. He actually trains with Goku a lot more, needing to find harmony with himself to further this power. And who better to ask than Goku, who's apparently done that with Super Saiyan already. So maybe it's kind of a similar case here, even though the forms are wholly different. Although, Goku is kind of preoccupied because he's also training Gohan. With Goku actually being around, he wants to actually see him unlock Super Saiyan 2. Well, he doesn't know what Gohan's about to unlock, but that's what it is. He saw it briefly in the time chamber, and Gohan never got a chance to fight in the Cell games. He knows that Gohan's on the cusp of something, and he wants to see it. Eventually, Gohan is able to ascend Super Saiyan, but it's still later than normal, probably a few months after, because he doesn't have the perfect catalyst for it. He has to unlock it through training. Naturally, this means Goku and Vegeta want to follow that afterwards, with Goku getting it after Gohan, then Vegeta following them. But Turles isn't going to get anything new here. He's mainly still trying to get control over his mighty Saiyan form. Surprisingly enough, the more that he works with it, the more he realizes that this isn't only superior to Super Saiyan, this might be superior to Super Saiyan 2. Although he still needs to make it 100% efficient, but if he can master this form, the power that he'll have could be amazing. But also much to his surprise, he sees that Gohan's actually on his level now with Super Saiyan 2, at least while Turles is uncontrolled at the moment. All the more reason to grow stronger because not only is someone on par with him, but it's a low-class hybrid Saiyan child. Turles is going to be the mightiest. But it's not like he spends all his time doing that. Of course, he does get more acclimated to Earth. He already was kind of acclimated to the group here and started enjoying life here. He acclimated a lot quicker than Vegeta. And he's enjoying life here too. During the time that he's not training, that desire for an opulent lifestyle is actually what fuels him to keep going as an Earthling, instead of just leaving the planet and going wherever he wants in space. Although it's not really a top priority right now, he does have the idea in the back of his mind that maybe he could bring the Tree of Might back somehow. He knows a good amount about it. And even better, the Tree of Might lives on within him. He was hoping he'd be able to find some remains of it where it once was, but of course that's been long healed. It's like the Tree of Might was never on Earth. So maybe he's going to have to try and synthesize his own Tree of Might, at least if he wants to do this. But he has no clue where to begin with that. Especially because if anything, it would have to take his own DNA to actually make that. And this gives Turles a very interesting job, to say the least. Goku starts farming because Chi Chi wants him to get a job and bring more money in. And this makes Turles think, what if he also became a farmer, but with trees instead? In an effort to breed his own tree of might, he could become a farmer. Plus, he can get money from this. He could be a lumberjack of sorts too. So, this is Turles' job. And this becomes his main source of income. Well, at least at first. With his desire for a more opulent lifestyle, there's another thing that Turles picks up on. From time to time, he explores cities. Surprisingly being pretty extroverted and making connections with people. But he stumbles upon a really fun hobby that eventually becomes something that he could use to make more money. Now, a lot of Turles' life has been about taking risk, although mostly physical risk and stuff. But he finds out he could do the same with money here, right here on Earth, and he gets a rush from it too. Turles becomes a gambler. He's really loving life here on Earth now. He has a job that kind of does further his goals, although planning a new tree of might is a pipe dream. But on top of that, he has a hobby now, and he's becoming a lot more social with people, mainly the main cast. At the very least, he and Vegeta don't argue anymore, but they don't really talk either. Goku always thought that Turles could become a good rival, but he's actually kind of a friend now, if anything. And in the original scenario, I actually did put Turles in a relationship too. Now, don't expect me to cover this much because it's not really going to be a big part of the story. I'm essentially just doing it because I know people will be asking and it's going to be kind of a reference to the original. But at some point over this time skip, there is a rare occasion where Bulma meets up with her sister, Tights, with Turles also getting to meet her too. And that's who he's going to be paired with in the scenario, just like the original. I feel like they go pretty well together. And funny enough, despite him and Vegeta not really being on good terms, this makes them brothers-in-law, assuming they're both legally married to their partners. Ironic, that kind of makes him a royal Saiyan then. Not that he cares about that, but he does find it kind of funny. But despite him and Vegeta being kind of separated, they both had very similar paths coming here to Earth. Both initially came to Earth around the same time, fought Goku, then ended up on Namek and fought Frieza. Eventually coming back to Earth and assimilating, even now having families. And unlike Vegeta, Turles has a job too. Although this is a bit concerning for Turles because the Galactic Patrol still might be after him, and apparently Tights is pretty close with Jocko, even closer than Bulma is. He doesn't tell her that he's a wanted Galactic criminal, and he simply just hides whenever Jocko comes to Earth, darting off to some casino or somewhere. Not because he doesn't have the power to fight the Galactic Patrol, he has more than enough strength. He just doesn't want to deal with that, especially because one of the patrolmen is his wife's friend. More of a reason for him to lay low. And as we get to the end of the time skip, Turles does continue working on Mighty Saiyan, and eventually does get a mastery over it, mainly thanks to help from Goku. Of course, controlling it is way harder than controlling a regular Super Saiyan, especially because the mechanics of this form are different from Super Saiyan. He realized this in the time chamber, which is the whole reason he got it in the first place. 
but the form was derived from that latent maliciousness and him making it his own. It makes him wonder, if he stayed evil, he probably would have been able to further this form or maybe even get something completely different. But his nature and heart here, they're more unique than that. He might have been pure evil before, but now that's completely different. Even around the time that he unlocked this, he still did have a little bit of that within him, even though he was kind of a good guy. And that's what really makes it so hard to control here, the fact that he's been acclimated as an earthling. What this form really is is essentially a combination of Evil Saiyan and Super Saiyan. He can't use the two forms separately, which is also why it took him so long to unlock this, and why it's so hard to control in the first place. It's so strange because it's like the form's not really meant for him, even though it is his own unique form. So that's his main goal now. He needs to make this his own form. He's able to at least make it more efficient, but he could tell that this isn't true mastery over the form like he thought it was. True mastery is something else. It's a step further. It requires intense training for his body, his spirit, and his mind. There may be an evolution beyond this, but it's not going to be easy to unlock. But it really does make him wonder, if he kept that evil nature of his, would it be different? Would he be able to use these forms separately or something? Would he be able to control it better? Well, he doesn't worry about that. For now, he'll be essentially just channeling the power of the Tree of Might and Evil Saiyan through this unique Super Saiyan form of his. Now we're at the end of the time skip. While Gohan's not the focus here, I'm going to also mention that he does become the Saiyan and everything happens like normal. The Cell games did happen too, so Mr. Satan is still a world hero. As for everyone else, like I said, Vegeta's life kind of goes the same, Trunks is obviously still around, Goten's around as well, and Goku's around to raise him. There's not really a reason to cover everyone else's lives because really the biggest change here is the fact that Goku's alive. And with Goku being Goku, he just spends his time growing stronger. It is worth mentioning though, he probably won't unlock Super Saiyan 3 because he's not going to be up 24-7 training. But hey, at least this means King Kai gets to live. Although unfortunately, the only other really big change here is the fact that Android 18 and 17 are both dead. Blame Cell for that, not the group. Although, I guess this does make something about the tournament easier because instead of having Android 18 there, Turles just replaces her slot. The roster for the tournament is exactly the same otherwise. And I want you guys to take a wild guess. Does the Boo Saga happen here, or do we get to avoid it again? I'll put the Jeopardy timer up on here somewhere. Okay, are your guesses in? The Boo Saga? It doesn't happen. Yay, get skipped again. For one, having Turles there makes the group stronger. And it makes it harder for Bobbity and Deboer to stall. Pretty much everyone in the group would be stronger besides Goku. And that's only because Goku wasn't in another world. As for Gohan, he had Goku around to grow stronger, and to keep him somewhat motivated. Vegeta has even more motivation here because both Goku and Turles are on Earth, and obviously Turles is Turles with everything we covered. I guess Piccolo's weaker because he didn't fuse with Kami, but other than that, that means Deboer and the rest of the minions are pretty easily defeated. Now, this would mean that Bobbity got more energy from Gohan to start with, but he doesn't really have anything to do with it because he's not able to possess anybody else. You might think he'd be able to at least possess Turles or Vegeta, but no, I don't really see that happening here. Turles has completely reformed. And while he kind of does wonder what his power would be like if he became his old self, he's not going to let Bobbity control him. He's far too prideful for that, even if he will eventually break free of that control. And on top of that, he thinks it's kind of stupid to give into that just for some power. He's already grown strong enough on his own, and he doesn't need anyone else to make him mightier. As for Vegeta, he's pretty content as is. With Goku being alive, he's gotten all the fights with Kakarot that he wanted, so he's content in that regard. So you might think that maybe his relationship with Turles would cause him to turn Majin. But I don't think that's going to affect it either. Again, they've had seven years to basically get past that. And a lot of it is thanks to Bulma and Tights. Because, once again, they're technically related now. They've put aside their differences a while ago. Sure, it's not like they're best friends or anything. But they coexist pretty peacefully. And Vegeta's accepted that Turles is ahead of them because of the Tree of Might. And while he could use this as an opportunity to get stronger and get above Turles too, it would be pretty hypocritical of him. Because in the past, he said Turles had to use a crutch to get stronger. And this would be kind of a crutch to get stronger too at least in his eyes in this scenario specifically. So, because of all that, Bobbity is defeated pretty easily and isn't able to possess anyone. He actually is close to getting enough energy to revive Boo, but no one messes it up for the rest of the group. For what it's worth, we'll also briefly cover the tournament too. Once they all get back to the tournament, they all get reinstated because they didn't have anyone else anyways. So the tournament goes back to its initial format. As you'd probably guess too, Turles ends up winning the whole thing. And I'd say the final battle probably ends up being something like Gohan versus Turles, although it's not really a clear-cut battle. Turles is stronger than Gohan, but the really big reason that he wins is the fact that he has more skill and more experience. But other than that, I guess that's the end of the Boo Saga. And while we kind of did skip the Boo Saga, it does have its consequences. At least soon enough it will. Boo was never destroyed. His egg was contained by the Kais and taken back to their planet. Without his destruction, that means the seal on Moro is never broken either. Now, even if the seal were broken, it would take a while for him to get out of there. In the main story, he did need years to build back his magic after all, just to break out of there. Normally, this would mean Moro's not even influenced to even break out yet. He would just stay locked away, like he has for the past 10 million years. But being in the Galactic Patrol prison gives him something interesting. It gives him inmates that he's around. Of course, he's in very solitary confinement. He's not even near anybody. And while he doesn't have much magic, one thing that he can do at least 
is try and read the minds of others, trying to get any info from them. Of course, he's been doing this his entire time here. But only just now has he been hearing something interesting. Actually, he's heard of this a few years ago, and it's stuck with him. By reading the minds of the other prisoners, some of whom were part of the Frieza Force, or even other space criminals, they actually had some info about Turles. Especially with him being such a big target of the Galactic Patrol, rumors spread about him. He's pretty much their top priority at the moment. And when Moro learns about this, he wonders why. But as he looks more and more into it, he realizes why Turles is as strong as he is, and why he's such a big target in the first place. It's because of the Tree of Might. Something that Moro has heard rumors about in this time here, basically eavesdropping on others' minds. Now, of course, this doesn't really relate to the Boo Saga. This has been going on for years. But one thing that does relate to the Boo Saga is the fact that Moro feels something really strange after this. And he can tell something is amiss. With Boo's egg being secured by the Kais, it's almost like he feels the seal on him grow stronger. Shin and Kibito do their best to actually seal the egg even further. Which, unbeknownst to them, makes the seal on Moro feel even more oppressive, because they're sealing someone who already sealed Moro. He wonders why this is, but it encourages him to try and look at different methods of getting out of here, and getting his strength back. And he starts wondering about that Tree of Might. Maybe he could do something with that, but it's going to be kind of tough in the condition he's in right now. It sticks with him, though. But keep this all in mind, because this is really going to change how that's going to go. Some years pass after the Boo Saga, and eventually we do get to Battle of Gods, which, for the most part, also goes pretty much the same. Well, at least everything leading up to it. Again, without Boo there, that actually does affect this arc, because Beerus isn't going to be as angry as normal. He's actually pretty content with the Earth food here. Although, the result of this is pretty much the same. They find out about the Super Saiyan God from Shenron. With Turles actually being part of the ritual, surprisingly enough. Now, Turles is actually the most impressive Saiyan for Beerus. Because technically, Goku and Gohan are both weaker here. Gohan doesn't have ultimate, and Goku never gets Super Saiyan 3. So, the peak that he sees from all of them is Super Saiyan 2. At least, for Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta. For Turles, he gets to see his mighty Saiyan form. And that unique evolution interests him, but it's not really enough to pique his interest completely, thinking that Turles might be his rival. Although, for that reason, Turles is actually the focus of the ritual. But when they do the ritual on him, it doesn't really do anything. Did they do it wrong, or will it just not work on Turles? Well, they try again on Goku, and he ends up becoming the Super Saiyan God, fighting Beerus pretty much like normal. So they didn't do the ritual wrong, and it makes Turles wonder. First of all, that power that Goku's displaying, it's amazing. But also, why didn't the ritual work on him? The conclusion of Battle Gods goes the same, and eventually Vegeta and Goku do end up on Beerus' planet. Turles doesn't go along, though, because... It seems like for some reason, he doesn't have the potential to become a Super Saiyan God. And no one has a clue why, especially because Turles was part of the ritual and it ended up working with him in it. But for some reason, it didn't work with him being the focus of it. At least at first, they think that's the case. Eventually, when Goku and Vegeta do leave for Beerus' planet, Turles starts working on himself more, training even harder than he did during the Cell Saga. There's something he's missing. And very slowly, he feels something strange within him. Some power deep within him that he wants to try and unlock. He has no clue of what it is. Could it be related to the Super Saiyan God? Is it something completely different? There's only going to be one way to find out. Unbeknownst to Turles, the ritual did actually unlock something within him. But much like the Super Saiyan form, Turles is a unique case. So he has to go about this his own way. But he's beginning to see. The ritual wasn't useless. The ritual did something. He just never noticed. And this is where we'll leave off for now. What do you guys think about this part? What's going to happen next? Leave any thoughts or suggestions in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help with the channel and shows me you want to see more videos like this. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.